Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, and Director Cheeto, I also want to thank you for your, uh, your patience um, over the course of what uh, must have been a, a very long and trying uh, uh, hearing for you. Uh, it has been an unusually encouraging hearing and an unusually depressing hearing. And what's encouraging, Mr. Chairman, is that we came together to issue a strong statement deploring and categorically denouncing political violence in America. And I also didn't see any daylight between the members of the two parties today at the hearing in terms of our bafflement and outrage about the shocking operational failures that led to disaster and near catastrophe on July 13th, 2024. Uh, what is depressing is the extraordinary communications gap between the director of the Secret Service and Congress. Um, and I don't want to add to the director's uh, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Um, but I, I will be joining the chairman in uh, calling for the resignation of the director just because I think that the, this relationship is um, irretrievable at this point. And I think that uh, the director has lost the confidence of Congress um, at a very urgent and tender moment in the history of the country. And we need to very quickly move beyond this. But what I will say, Mr. Chairman, is that I took this hearing to be about two major policy failures. And one policy failure is the one that got the vast majority of the attention, which was the failure of the Secret Service to uh, effectively respond to uh, a gunman on a roof within uh, 150 yards of a, a presidential visit and speech. Um, but the other failure is on the part of Congress, because the mass shooting that took place in Butler, Pennsylvania, um, is replicated all over the country every day. And in fact, as I said, Mr. Chairman, it happened that evening um, in Alabama, in Birmingham, Alabama, where there was a mass shooting where more people even were killed and wounded than were killed and wounded in Butler, Pennsylvania. So it's true, the president, the former president, and the handful of people who get the Secret Service protection are the only people in America we thought were safe from an AR-15 attack. It's clear that they're not safe either, and we've got to get to the bottom of that. But we also have to get to the bottom of the larger problem, which is that the whole country is living like this in fear and in terror of assault weapon attacks in movie theaters, churches, synagogues, mosques, supermarkets, Walmarts, um, you know, uh, any place where an audience or a public gathers. And um, the worst was in Las Vegas, where a gunman got up on a roof and then just uh, mowed down 60 people uh, below him and wounded hundreds and hundreds of other people. So we've got to deal with that problem. We, yes, we've got to move as swiftly as we can to deal with the problems of the Secret Service, but the broader problem is still there. And I just wish to uh, the heavens that our colleagues that could get together on the question of presidential security against an AR-15 attack could get together on the question of public security against an AR-15 attack, because all of us are vulnerable. All of our families are in danger by this, and the rest of the world doesn't live this way. And we have to look to see how uniquely strange it is that we allow 20-year-olds to access AR-15s, weapons of mass destruction, and show up in public places to endanger other people. And I hope, Mr. Chairman, we can work together on that with the same spirit of bipartisan commitment to the public safety that was exemplified here today. And I yield back to you.